do you even lift? So a few days ago, I did 10 sets of leg press to failure or near failure. Now, the reactions were pretty understandable. A lot of them were asking how sore I was or, you know, how many days it would take for the soreness to go away. Someone said, you just did a year's worth of volume for me. Someone flag it for adults or at least a parental advisory. Didn't know you could transfer pain wirelessly. Another one, can you recover in one day? Say you went to failure on Monday, will you be ready for a workout on Wednesday? Which is actually technically two days, 48 hours. If Wednesday involves legs in any capacity, you are screwed. Am I? You'll see in a second. Damn it, Jeff, how were you able to go home? How many days did it take to recover your lower body from this? Did you perform any types of cardio on subsequent days? Please give us an update on how many months until your soreness went away. But how sore were you, LOL. And finally, this comment, which is what sparked my later actions. I know you were just doing 10 sets to failure to make a point. So, context in hand, it's worth pointing out that you will almost certainly be weaker on that leg press machine your next workout. Because training to absolute failure with that many sets is very, very hard to recover from, even after a full week. Which is why most people who train to failure i.e. real failure, rather than fake Isretel Schoenfeld failure, which I agree actually is a good comment, tend to really limit total volume. I agree. However, I'm the kind of person that if someone says to me, Jeff, you cannot do this, I attempt to do that. With the exception of like murder and theft and, and that kind of thing. And so two days after that original workout, I maxed out on the leg press again to see if I could get more than the 10 original reps. Was I sore? A little bit, like kind of, but probably a lot less sore than people think. I've been training for a long time. I'm very resistant to training and therefore I just don't really get sore, especially from something like a leg press. And so I maxed out again, just two days later. Some people thought it would take a week or more to recover from. Actually, I got more reps that second day. More reps. I went from 10 reps to actually getting 12 reps. Now you could say, you know, the tempo is a little bit different, but I don't count tempo. I count performance. I don't limit my performance by decreasing the speed of the reps. I want maximum motor unit activation, and therefore I'm trying to get as many reps as I can. It's an AMRAP, not a slow as many reps as possible kind of thing. The day after that, I did a hard 2.5 miles worth of intervals. And it's not like my performance tanked there either. In fact, it was much better than the time before. So just because you're training to failure doesn't mean you need a week to recover, even if it is quite a few sets. Now, I'm not saying you have to do 45 sets to failure per week. There's always going to be a limit. But that limit is probably higher than you think. I see people claim and talk about overtraining so, so much, but it's incredibly difficult to actually overtrain. And the vast majority of people, including probably you, are undertrained. And yet, who talks about undertraining? Not very many people. And then two days after that interval run, I was doing another leg workout. Hard sets of squats, and then hard sets of Bulgarian split squats as well. And so... I don't actually find this to be amazing or abnormal. I don't you know, claim to have any kind of weird recovery capacity or anything like that. I don't consider this to be unusual. The fact that other people would consider this to be unusual, I find to be unusual, okay? So get your head in the game, bro. They say we only use a fraction of gains. True potential. Well, imagine you're designing a physique. You consciously create each aspect. But sometimes it feels like it's almost creating itself, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah like I'm discovering it. Genuine inspiration, right? But in YouTube Fitness... Our mind continuously does this. We create and perceive our world simultaneously. And our mind does this so well that we don't even know what's happening. That allows us to get right in the middle of that process. Okay, realize that you can actually do more than you think you can in the vast majority of circumstances. And stop worrying about recovery. For every person that buys a massage gun, probably 1% of those people actually need it.
And this segues into the Alan Thrall segment of this video. I saw this video by him a few months ago, and I, it was one of those videos where I find myself just nodding in agreement and realizing that I've experienced a lot of what he has talked about. Most Americans are not overtrained and under recovered. They are undertrained and over recovered, if that's even a term. Where sometimes personal bests come out of nowhere. You know, on paper, you should be really fatigued. You look at your program, your, your training log, and you're like, huh. I've had plenty above average days. I've set PRs at the end of a week when fatigue was certainly high. I wasn't on paper or maybe fully recovered. It was, you know, in the middle of a training block or a training cycle. I've done a lot of volume over the past few days. And maybe you're a little bit achy when you're warming up. You wake up in the morning and you're a little bit fatigued. You know, clearly a little bit foggy in the morning. But once you get to the gym and you start warming up, you start to feel pretty damn good. I don't think we need to harp on recovery so much by always telling people that they probably aren't recovered. And then you start to feel a freaking amazing. And then you start crushing personal bests. And you think to yourself, I should feel like dog shit right now based on what I've been doing over the past week. Other times you feel like oh wow, I should be fully recovered. Like the last week has been really easy. It's been a deload or I've taken a few days off and yet you feel suspiciously like dog shit. Even personally for myself, if I take a few days off lifting, like a long weekend of rest, I don't feel more recovered on Monday. I usually feel sluggish and it takes me till midweek or end of the week to really get the ball moving. You're like, I, sh I should feel completely recovered and yet things don't feel all that smooth. You know, things feel a little bit off. And so I think, I'm not going to say recovery is a myth, but certainly it's not as black and white as you are recovered or not recovered. And some power lifters do taper into a meet. They do deload into a meet to try to reduce the fatigue, but a lot of them don't really do that much of a reduction in fatigue. You know, I was watching a, a long YouTube video with uh, Swole Fesser, Johnny Candido, and Sean Noriega a few months ago, and basically all of them said... If they deload and taper too much, it actually reduces their performance. And a lot of them are still doing, you know, hard, pretty decent volume and, and higher reps the week or two weeks before a meet. I think it was Noriega who was like doing sets of 10 on pause deadlifts a few days, like two or three days before his meet. And you would think on paper, this is going to impact his performance negatively. But because they've developed this work capacity and recovery capacity, they don't get super sore, it doesn't really beat them up, they're used to all these movements, and therefore they can keep this high volume, and it doesn't really impact their performance negatively whatsoever. And I've had circumstances where I was sore, you know, I was returning to training or I did a new movement, and I thought, you know, wow, my quads are really sore, or, or my hamstrings are really sore, like there's no way I could perform today. I went in, I warmed up well, you know, might might take 10, 15, 20 minutes or more to start feeling good, but once you're warmed up, it actually causes the soreness to go away far earlier than it otherwise would. If you do nothing, yeah, you might be sore for a week. But if you throw in another couple of sessions, sometimes even hard sessions, you recover and the soreness goes away way more quickly. And so if you're thinking you can only train once a week because your soreness lasts a week, you would actually probably be better served training more frequently, even when sore. And even if my performance was worse, let's say I didn't get 12 reps on the leg press, maybe I got nine or eight or something like that, that doesn't mean it's unproductive work. You don't always have to get better session by session, especially the more advanced you get. If you're a beginner, I would say yes, you should always be trying to progressively overload. But once you get more advanced, you have to realize that's not always going to happen. And motivation, that comes and goes. There are some days when I don't really have a specific motivation to train, and I'm just going based on discipline, based on habit, based on the fact that I know once I get there, I will enjoy the process. But it's not like I'm always fired up or charged up or completely ready to go to the gym. And so on the whole, I agree that recovery is definitely overrated. You have all these apps telling you if you're recovered, all, you know, massage guns. Every single week, some company emails me trying to get a video about some recovery product. And yeah, this video is not going to help my chances with that. But it doesn't fucking matter because I'm not going to sell a lie, you know, chirotherapy or massage gun, any of this bullshit, 
when in the vast majority of cases, it is not the limiting factor. You can train your recoverability over time. And just because you don't feel 100%, that doesn't mean you shouldn't train. And sometimes training, when you don't feel ready to train, can help increase your recovery capacity over time and to force your body to adapt over time. And yes, you should listen to your body, but you have to realize that sometimes how you feel is a lie. Sometimes you'll feel great, perform like shit. Sometimes you'll feel like shit and perform really well. And so there's definitely a disconnect here that I think it's important to be aware of. Besides, most recovery modalities are either free or something you would do anyway. Food, water, sunlight, you're basically a plant at this point, sleep, de-stressing, walking, just really basic stuff that no one can ever sell you. And that's why most people don't talk about them. So realize that you can recover faster than you think, especially if you train that ability over time. All right, that's all for this video. Like, subscribe, share, notifications, all that good shit. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.